so nice. Oh my goodness. It's not meant for driving smoothly. It wants to be thrashed. No, this isn't another video about my 300ZX build. I'm sorry for those of you that have been waiting to see this thing run and start and finally start driving and tuning it. Unfortunately, we are still waiting on parts for it. I wanted to have this car running by the end of the year. The parts should be here by next week. For now, this car is just gonna have to wait because today, believe it or not, we are gonna be working on the CRX. This car has been running great for about five months now, but I've been having a couple other issues and one of those in particular, uh, if you guys remember the last video with the CRX, I, I actually had the clutch cable break on me after just getting the motor rebuilt and driving again. I was able to limp it home with a broken clutch cable uh, and that's by driving it without using the clutch. If you don't know, don't know what to tell you, figure it out. I'm honestly kind of like worried about driving it and the clutch cable breaking on me again because ever since I replaced it the last time, it's just kind of felt off. There shouldn't be such a stupid problem as this. It's, it's just something I needed to take care of. And today I'm finally taking care of that. And that is we are getting rid of the clutch cable and we are switching to a hydraulic setup for the pedal assembly. Now it's already a hydraulic transmission that's in the car. It's just been converted from the cable to hydraulic with the, I believe it's a K-tuned or Hasport uh, cable to hydro conversion or hydro to cable conversion rather. Um, so I, it's been running on that, but I really don't like it. It doesn't feel well. And I've done a lot of research on the pedal assembly conversions. Um, the one I decided to go with here is the Hush Performance Kit. Uh, this is their V3 kit. I have been going back and forth on getting this for a while. And honestly, after the last clutch cable that broke on me, I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger. So here we are. This is the Hush Performance Cable to Hydraulic Pedal Assembly Conversion Kit. Uh, it comes with a Willwood, I believe this is a half inch master cylinder, uh, which I've already put in one in the Z and I love the way that feels and the, that was set up. And then the big thing really is the bracket. If you are not familiar with the CRX bracket assembly, uh, the CRX bracket assembly from the factory, if you use a cable to hydro conversion, the geometry of the conversion basically is not meant for uh, hydraulic transmission. It's not optimal. It makes the pedal feel way heavier than it needs to. And it over time causes the cable to stretch and could break at any moment, which it's just not something you want to deal with, especially in traffic. It's, it's, it's not a comforting feeling. Problem is with this setup, you have to pull out the ducting in the CRX behind the driver's side uh, steering wheel. Um, and then that pedal assembly, mounts where the driver's side air intake duct is. It's, it's, it's almost like at, at any moment, the, the clutch pedal can slip off your foot and break your shin, literally. It's, it's, it's almost dangerous to drive. Uh, every time I push on the clutch pedal, it's like I'm, I'm deadlifting 100 pounds with my left foot. If I had a scale to sandwich between my foot and the pedal, when I push down on it, I would gladly do that for you guys. But unfortunately, I don't have a way of doing that. I don't think. Okay, so let's get started with tearing this clutch pedal assembly out of here, uh, which means this panel has to come off. All the wiring I have up in there have to, has to come out, including the fuse box that's behind, behind that. Then I have to drop my steering column, uh, at least lower it. I don't think it has to come all the way down. I, I don't actually remember. It's, it's, it's been a hot minute. I apologize you guys this is so hard to record up in here because it's so tight but there's two air ducts this is the front one and then this is the one that's behind that it's usually wrapped in this foam um, yeah all right well I guess this is it 
this kicked my ass and that took a little bit longer than I expected. What was primarily holding me up was actually the brake booster. Uh, I forgot that you had to pull that out of the firewall, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, once we slid that out far enough and undid the other duct that's up in there, uh, this actually came right out. Honestly, there's a lot of surface rust on mine. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna clean it up, maybe hit it, scuff it with a wire wheel, shoot it with some black paint, because uh, this is way more rusted than I, I think it should be. And just to prevent any more rust from getting in here, I'm just gonna spray it all down. Yeah, let's, uh, let, let's get to this. Okay, so pedal assembly is done with paint. Uh, it's still kind of setting up. It's still a little tacky in some spots, but uh, it's, it's good enough for now. It's not like it's gonna be in the public eye. It was mostly just to prevent any kind of further rust from happening on it. So the clutch pedal itself is gonna have to have a hole drilled uh, somewhere in this area, I believe. Uh, so I'm gonna drill that, and then we can also start mounting the clutch master cylinder reinforcement bracket. Uh, this will be bolted on to the clutch uh, clutch pedal bolt right here, and then one of these holes up here. And then there's also this reinforcement bracket here to further reinfor reinforce this uh, bracket because if you're not familiar with these pedal assemblies, they are known to flex quite a bit with all the pressure from the clutches, especially once you start upgrading the clutches. With that said, uh, <sighs> Let's start drilling the clutch pedal out first and then get this thing mounted up to the pedal assembly. Okay, so you guys are probably watching this time lapse and thinking, oh wait, he forgot to drill his hole. And the answer is, yeah, I forgot to drill the hole in the clutch uh, bracket. Okay, so the hole is drilled in the clutch pedal assembly. I got a little bit too close to this edge, a little closer than I wanted to. I wanted to be a little bit off center this way, just in case I needed an angle uh, for the clevis to rotate on. But actually, I don't even know if you could call this a clevis because it's not really a fork or anything, but heim joint, let's say. I probably won't need that much. I did this for nothing. But if you can, my suggestion is to just try to get more centered than I did. Okay, so now, as you can see, I got this nut loosened up. I'm gonna spin this in until it's level with this for starters. That way the bolt goes right through without any kind of resistance. Um, and then once we get that set up, we want this arm to be dead straight and parallel to this cylinder right here. So when we push on it, we don't want any kind of resistance. So in order to get that level, obviously you can see there's a little bit of a gap. So we slide the bolt in here. And then I got all these washers that slide right through here, like so. I need all four, probably. And we can slide it through. Let's try that and check that out. See how it's mostly straight with this? Then when we depress it, it just goes up ever so slightly, but it doesn't feel like it's binding at all. So I'd say we're pretty good, guys. There's no play in it, no slop or nothing. Right on the money. First time. I like it. Yeah. Other pop? Give me five. She wants to say hi. Say hi, Zoe. Okay, so it's a new day here. It is a brisk, like, 50 degrees here, which is a little too chilly for my Florida blood. But today we're going to be finishing up the CRX. I've got the pedal assembly on the stand over here. So this is all ready to go. For the most part. Now what I have to do is actually put this whole thing in the car and then drill the holes for this mounting bracket right here. So this bracket right here is actually going to go up through the cowl um, of the driver's side. So let's get this thing installed today. Also, along with the interior that all has to come apart, 
We have to take apart the top cowl here. So I'm just gonna do that very carefully. I've already removed it once before. Um, it's, it's, it's old plastic, so you really gotta be careful with it if you still have the original, because um, those clips are very hard to find and very hard to come by now. So that's just something to keep in mind, but we're gonna pull that apart too, get all that set up for you as well. Okay, so next up, we've got the bulkhead fitting, pass-through fitting, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is the piece that goes through the firewall for the hydraulic line. Where you want to put this is kind of in a tricky spot. You really have to be careful. Okay, so where this is supposed to go is technically, here's your padding, if you still have this in your car. Um, it's behind here, and it goes right behind these brake lines. Uh, it's, you just really got to be careful because you can see kind of a square right here. That's where it's going to come out at. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a 3 8 inch drill bit and poke through the firewall with this. You need this piece of crap anymore. Let's get this out of here. Freaking over this junk. Because now, this is what's replacing that big ass cable. This little hose, well, and the other hose that goes in the inside of the car. So let's get this in here and ran to my transmission. And I also have to remove my cable hydro to cable adapter off the transmission. Because the transmission is already a hydraulic transmission. So it's naturally ready to go for the hydraulic setup. All right, now or never. Go ahead and install this thing in here and uh, hopefully I get it in the right spot because I still have to drill these holes and I'm not sure where to drill them yet. So I'm just gonna mount it up in there. I can't find any instructions on this particular um, setup. This is the EF V3. So I see some of the instructions for the older kits, but nothing quite out there for this one. And all the videos and instructions that I see online, nobody actually shows them drilling the holes for this. So. I'm gonna do my best to get that for you guys. So as it turns out, I have to now remove these intake ducts over here as well. I thought removing just this one would be okay, but if you look, this is my brake master cylinder. It still has to go all the way up over here. So these are gonna have to come out as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and yank those out and then we can get it up in there and get the holes drilled through the cowl. Okay guys, I finally got the intake duct from out from under there. Uh, this thing has been kicking my ass for like the last hour or two. Okay, so real quick to go over how to get this vent out because it is a nightmare with the dash in the car. So first thing, loosen up the dash, remove your gauge cluster. Uh, this is the one you need to get out first. That way you can pull out the ventilation tube that runs into the door. That you can get through the side over here the second one is this right here, which you can get through going right here. And then third thing is to stick a pry tool up there and pry this forward and then down. And you should be able to give it a good hard yank and twist and it should come out, should. Now, I can't say for certain because I really grabbed mine hard to the point where it ripped all the uh, staples out. It's actually really strong. So I'll be able to mend this back together if I ever really needed to. I would consider this a good intake duct still. Um, so I'm gonna keep this and carry on with what we got.
Now it's time to install the reservoir. Um, I've decided to go with a motorcycle reservoir because it's not a very big system, hydraulic system to begin with. So we don't need much of a reservoir. So I'm gonna install this, mount this against the firewall and then run the line from the firewall all the way to the clutch uh, slave cylinder, which should hopefully bolt right up to the transmission and bleed it and then we're ready to go. So let's get this thing installed and then test everything out. As you can see, everything worked out pretty dang well. Um, we got the motorcycle reservoir. Uh, it's not that big. The only problem I really have with this is that it takes longer to bleed. Other than that, it's small, it fits nicely in that area, and it, it, it doesn't take up too much space. So that's perfect, honestly. It, it just sucks. Hopefully I don't have to bleed this that much. Without further ado, let's get some driving on this. Obviously, there's not much to see outside of the uh, slave cylinder that is now down there and the line running all the way back into the firewall up to the clutch pedal assembly and <laughs> That's pretty much it. The kit overall is a Pretty tight fit. It, it fits nicely. It functions Excellent. Let's just take the car for a drive and I'll show you guys how much easier this is to drive with the hydraulic setup it, it honestly th this video may not even do it justice because it's something you really have to feel inside the car. Okay y'all, so the Hush Performance cable to hydraulic conversion is now installed in the car. Uh, I'm now gonna do my best to give you guys a full review on this uh, cable to hydro conversion. I will say before, if you watched the beginning of this video, you probably remember me saying that it felt like I was pushing a 100 pound weight with my left foot every single time that I had to push in the clutch. For lack of better explanation, like that is 100% what it was. This car was a workout to drive and it made it very difficult to drive smoothly. So yeah, enough of all that. Let's get to driving. I'll do my best to explain to you guys everything that's going down here. You guys ever seen those memes where it's like the cartoon with the one guy with the big left leg because he's constantly having to smash the pedal through the floor what's absolutely hilarious is when i first got into the car i forgot and i probably will continue to forget how much lighter the pedal is now and smash the clutch pedal through the floor push the clutch pedal through the floor here it's so much lighter it makes the vehicle overall just easier to drive a little hiccup there but you know at the end of the day the clutch in this car is still a four puck unsprung single disc it's not meant for driving smoothly it wants to be thrashed
Okay, you guys, I would call this a huge success. This is one of the things, it's now on my must-do list for anyone with a CRX or EF chassis Honda, because this is, this makes the car so much more pleasant to drive. I don't have to worry about stupid crap like my clutch cable or pedal assembly breaking on me. Was it a pain in the ass? Yes. This was, this was a lot more, uh, intricate than I had actually planned. I thought I'd just drop the steering column, pull the pedal assembly out, throw the new pedal assembly in, and we'd be good to go. Um, it wasn't that much, it wasn't the end of the world, but it was more than I thought it was. So if you're an EF CRX guy and you've been on the fence about switching your cable to hydraulic uh, for the clutch engagement, 110%, just, just do it already. If you're not worried about the AC vents, most of you probably don't have working AC anyways, just just go ahead and do it. I, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago when I first did a B-Series swap. Um, this is awesome. Especially if you already have a hydraulic uh, transmission in your car, don't don't even waste your money with the ca hydraulic to cable conversion swaps. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll see y'all next time.